Welcome to the So You Wanna Get Fat podcast. I am your host. And oh my God, I just heard the theme song like play in, while, while in, in my head <laughs> while I was saying that. Like that, the, the piano keys. Okay. Bonjour, mes amours. How you doing, buddy? Good. We had an awesome guest on the podcast, which that will come out on a separate episode, okay, uh, okay. probably after this, who is Stephen Toberoff the CEO of Wolco Foods. Mm -hmm. So definitely be sure to check out that episode when it comes out next week. Uh, that, one, that one will take a little bit more yes, editing. It went better than expected. Much better than, well, not because like, we thought Steven was a shitty guest. It was- Oh, no, no. It, I, I knew that. That's why we yeah. invited him. We, we right. knew it was gonna be a good we guest. We knew it was gonna be a good guest. But it was even, I was, I found myself You were very quiet. I was listening. Yeah. I was like, oh, I love this. I love this podcast. It, it was a lot of fun. So Stephen is, again, as I mentioned, the CEO of Woolco Foods. Woolco Foods is a huge, wonderfully, highly regarded food distributor to the New York and New Jersey area. But we talk about a lot of behind They're the scenes stuff. They're not as corporate as, uh, as Cisco or right, all that stuff. Right, right. They're US like, foods. it's more yeah. privately owned. It's, right. You get that hands-on feeling. Yeah, very cool company. So definitely want you guys to check that out. But you know what else we want you to check out? Us! <laughs> Subscribe! Subscribe! <laughs> Hit the thumbs up. Thumbs up. The like button. button. Yeah, the like notification. Button. Yeah, the comments. The ding, the bell, the yes, what. Yes, all this stuff. Um, all right, let's get straight into it. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the U.S. is moving to ban TikTok. We're going to check out a clip from our buddy Mudahar from Some Ordinary Gamer. Mm -hmm. But before that, I figure let's go into... Uh, before we get to the current news, because that is actually current, current news. news, which we don't do too often. Depends when you drop this podcast. <laughs> yeah, true, true. This podcast is coming out next week, so yeah. it won't be very long. That Well, that was the whole point oh, of trying wow. to be we're more within far. a week? We're within a week now. So, But before we get into the current news, mm -hmm. we are going to get into the not-so-current news. You're still doing the computer. I'm doing the typewriter. <laughs> So check this out. Paul Alexander, the man who lived in an iron lung for over 70 years, has passed away at the age of 78. Wow, he had a full life in there. He had a full life, and check this out. Paul Alexander, who spent more than 70 years living inside an iron lung, has passed away. In 1952, at the age of six, Paul was affected with polio. However, this did not deter him from embracing each day to the fullest. Despite being confined to the iron lung, Paul pursued a career in law and practiced for over three decades. So what I wanted to call this news article for, for, for our notes is, what's your excuse? What's your, I was going to say, what the fuck is your excuse? <laughs> Holy shit. For real. Like, dude, look at this guy. Oh, my God. Oh, he's got magnets on. I just realized those are all like- Yeah, know, he's like, decor he decorates he's his. Decorates. And I guess your brain acclimates to where you are and your environment yeah. and everything. So yeah, why 70 not? 70 years in an iron lung and has a, and practice law. Dude, Good imagine for being him. responsible for the maintenance of the machine. Ooh, yeah. But very cool. Very I found this very inspirational. Yes. Very inspirational. Well, for this next uh, clip, for the not so current news, we're gonna oh. need our headphones. Yes, headphones. Headphones. Tab. Okay. I know you don't like this, can, but uh, we need the. I hear you headphones. now. Headphones. Yes, you can. Can you hear, hear me now? I can hear you very good. Good, good, yes. good. Is it racist if I do that voice? Which accent are you doing? French. Ah, oh, it's not. <laughs> You were getting weirded out when we were hanging out with a mutual friend of ours, uh -huh. and I was uh, doing the Marcel voice, but it was, it was kind of sounding. Well, he thought you were doing an Asian <laughs> yeah, accent. he did. <laughs> and I was like, you two need to stop now, yeah. because nobody, you guys are bad at accents, yes. first of all. Yes, 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 we are. This is testing out a new way to make airport security even more annoying. This could be the future of airport security. At the TSA's Innovation Checkpoint at Las Vegas International, travelers are testing new self-service technology for the first time. The idea is it's supposed to be like a regular TSA checkpoint, except fewer TSA agents and hopefully streamlined. Do you have everything tucked in, uh, inside your bin? Yes. Here, passengers are greeted by a... Oh, it's so funny. 
<laughs> this is going to be like, check out the supermarket. <laughs> 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 and I'll be there like, fuck, why isn't this working? <laughs> Nothing is. Uh, oh, I, you know, there's going to be a lot of people handicapped to yeah, do this. Yeah, yeah. The elderly. Yeah. The, They're just going to get frustrated. Yep, yeah. All the people who are not techno technically inclined yeah, there's going to be that one person that's overseeing six kiosks and, and holding that, you can know, someone you know someone's going to be holding up this line yeah oh yes oh yes let's or at going. least holding up one screen you know, if you have a question it's really easy just to talk to the camera get a very quick answer back real agent real person right who doesn't have to physically be in the checkpoint with you there's but, still but where are they function that we've asked them to perform but in a different location what the f is this shit <laughs> So it's a regular TSA line, but you added a Zoom meeting? <laughs> right? Yeah. So, hey, hey, I said I don't have a bomb. I don't have a bomb. What? What? You're muted. You're muted. I can't. Oh, wait, sorry. I'm muted. I'm muted. This isn't going to work, guys, okay? Because we all know what it's like to work remotely. TSA is going to be pretending to look for bombs, but they actually have porn open in another tab, right? <laughs> And even if they do catch someone, what are they gonna do? Order us to tackle ourselves? <laughs> hey, I got a solution for you, TSA. It's a new form of technology called open another lane. Just open yes. another yes. lane. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but they don't, it's again, they don't wanna pay for labor. No, they don't wanna pay for, that's, the, it's just a it's, cost saving measure. Yeah. yeah, it's all it is. We spoke to Steven Toberoff, which is gonna come up in the next episode. We're talking about technology and restaurants and how despite there's all these new technologies coming out like ghost kitchens and uh, tablet ordering, a lot of it comes out expecting to come out one way and it ends up morphing another way. I'll let you guys watch the pod that podcast episode when it comes out. But he made a very good point where one thing about the restaurant business or the hospitality industry, what makes it so special is the human interaction mm -hmm. and the experience that you can provide. And while this is the TSA isn't necessarily looking to make I'm not your, making, looking to make any emotional attachment right, with these right. but the, employees the, the, of the government. The point being is, you know, they're trying to force technology into everything. And a scenario like this where it comes to safety, mm. I, I just don't think it makes sense. No. whatsoever let us know in the comments below what until the think. robots come in yeah until the robot well then that's another problem yep He's yeah. a new problem the oscars oh! just happened the oscar remember our movie da, na, na, na. godzilla minus one team's uh team brings godzillas to the oscars red carpet check this out yeah, but did well, they win oscars well they apparently oh yeah so at the oscars the team behind godzilla's minus one stole the spotlight with claw-shaped godzilla themed shoes on the red carpet Winning the award for best visual effects, yes. the team created the memorable moment at the Academy Awards. Check them shoes out. Oh, I got little Godzillas on their feet right there. I wouldn't mind them just to get a couple of inches taller. <laughs> so, congrats to the team of Godzilla Minus One because you guys know how much Godzilla, we, yeah, Godzilla, Godzilla, Godzilla. Dude, uh, I don't. Uh, just just because it's Japanese, but like, dude, are you watching Shogun? No, I've heard so many amazing things about this show. So good. So good. Yeah, you're you're the second person to Dude. tell me that in 24 hours. It is so good. Yeah, is it good? Oh, very, oh, good. Oh, very good. Very good. Very good. Which accent are we doing now? Japanese. Oh. 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 Mm. You get into it. Yeah. And, yeah. and they're, you know, Japanese are like- And the own. guy who, the main guy, he, he just plays, he always plays the most badass Japanese yes. characters. Is he Japanese? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Every time I see him, like if he's in a trailer, I'm like, I want to see what he's doing. Yeah, he's very recognizable. Yeah, very recognizable. But he just plays badass characters yes. really well. He he was even in, I think he even played a bad guy in a Marvel movie. I think so. Yes, yes, he did. Uh, it's the scene where Hawkeye's going on this Rampage. killing yes. spree. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. that's exactly. I can't believe I remember that. Okay, so uh, more on the not so current news. Uh, Balenciaga unveils a four thousand four hundred dollars Scotch tape bracelet during the Paris Fashion Week. You know who's buying that? Not rich people. <laughs> Morons. Yes, idiots are buying that shit. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I'm not even going to bother reading. But I do text. like the ring. I think that's cart. That is that Cartier. I, I wouldn't fucking know. Uh, let's move on to the meat and potatoes of today's episode. The U.S. is trying to get, or I guess they're already 
getting TikTok banned. And uh, you know who always has an interesting take on these types of things? Mudahar of Some Ordinary Podcast. So let's see what he has to say. What's up, boy? Oh, okay, Seems I know like it is. that TikTok ban's moving a little bit forward, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now, a couple days ago, I talked about this TikTok ban as if, you know, there was something that was going to actually happen. And, uh, you know, for me, I like to look at these things as maybe they're just going to be stopped down the road because there's always way too much money down the line. But today, I'm going to put a little bit of the tinfoil hat on with, with, with respect and we're going to look into this going forward. Now, obviously, if you've been following today, uh, literally, it got passed. The bill that we were looking oh, at a few days passed. ago passed in the U.S. House by a vote of 352 in favor and 65 in opposing. And now it goes to the Senate, where who knows what will happen. It still is a chance for it not actually going through. So what's the point of that vote? To ban TikTok. No, but, yeah, but what's the point of it? Somebody else has to approve it now. Mm-hmm. I, I don't understand more, our government. More uh, layers to complicate things, delay things. You I don't know? know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, too. The aspects of the U.S. government has basically said, if the Senate gets this through, then boy, I'm signing that thing into law. <laughs> Old Biden's doing it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's yeah, that's true. If after it passes the Senate, then the president still has to mm -hmm. sign it, right? Or if it if it passes a certain amount of time, does it automatically go into law? Let's, Something like let's, that. Let's let's not show people how ignorant we are of our government. <laughs> no, it happened. Now, for anybody that's wondering how something like this can pass through so quickly and why it's almost being pushed through with rapid speed, well, that's because TikTok is now considered a national uh, security problem. In fact, it's basically been considered a national security problem for like two years now that I've been covering this whole topic. And uh, the reason for that is pretty honest and upfront. It's, a, it's an application that's headquartered in China, ByteDance, the parent company. And if you know anything about Chinese law, at any given moment, the Chinese government can basically walk up to your door and say, buddy, give us all of the data. We want all of it. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine you're an American person and all of a sudden you're just sitting there minding your own business. Another country can basically grab whatever information they want off of you. It sounds creepy, and it is. Now, the reason why this is scary is if politicians possibly so let me understand this because not only you give them the information but are they using tiktok as a portal on your phone to go into deeper into your phone well that's the concern yeah right 100 can they are they using the app to be able to go look can they go into your contacts yeah, that's the can concern. they go into your emails yeah. so you know when you uh uh have and you that agree with them. Exactly. They have that agreement. Like, no yeah, one. Yeah, you're giving them permission to go. Right, more or less. And uh, apparently, some of that shit gets really dicey. And I never read it. Never will. Who does? Who does? Uh, apparently, guys like Mudahar and Joe Rogan do. <laughs> and uh, it's I'm some not scary on the shit. TikTok. Now, well, I am on the TikTok, but I, I got to be honest, I've always been re resistant to using it yeah, because. But you, are, you are the Chinese. So I have to be suspicious of you I'm, now? I'm Chinese, I'm Asian American, dick. <laughs> yeah, me too. I am, uh, I'm European American too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I lived in mainland China for six years. And I, you know, when I, when I said that, I, it used to be like a lot cooler, you know, you know, I lived in mainland China. Yeah. But now it's like, Ooh. I lived in mainland China for six years and everyone looks at me a little. Why? Yeah. What, what were you doing? You were there here, for, but then yeah. you went there yeah, and exactly. you're back? Yeah. It's like, why? Did you get special training? More or less, right? <laughs> Do you like, get re-educated? Yeah. Like someone, <laughs> someone may play a certain frequency and I just go into kill mode all of a sudden, oh, you know? What's that? Uh, Zo movie? Zoolander. Uh -oh, no. oh, no, but Zoolander was based on an original movie. Yeah. With, oh, it's super famous. Okay, never mind. Anyway. Move forward. Um, man, I but I did live in mainland China for six years, and the government is just super fucking heavy-handed with everything they do. Yeah, you still managed to have fun. I <laughs> oh, Yes. Yes, I did. But that was a long time ago. Those were different times. Can you still have the same fun now? No, I wouldn't even go back. Are you on their are you on their shit list? Possibly. You know, I consume certain types of content that may not paint their stuff in the so they, brightest they, of lights. They're so. definitely keeping a list. Yeah. And yeah, you're and, on that yeah, list. And, and and I have TikTok. So it doesn't help. And I have TikTok on my phone. Yeah. So they know what I'm consuming. Aiding you know and I mean? abetting. Yeah. But uh I, I'll give you an example. And this is a small example, but uh 
back in the day, a thing used to be PC cafes. You remember that? Before mm -hmm. everyone had high speed internet and you know, there were you'd, have to, yep. you'd go to a place where they had a ton of computers. You can do your business there, mainly for video gaming. And you would be inputting your information there. Yeah. Uh, Guess what? Th these are much more popular in Asia than than I f I feel than it like people is in the live States. there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they get food brought there. They get yeah. you know, Restroom breaks are yeah. like on a almost in the seat. Yeah, there are pl places where they have uh, rooms you can sleep in. You know, there's even room like a computer in a room with a bed in it. Uh, so there was one time when I was living in China, where somebody was uh, someone, some kid was at a PC cafe. I guess he got pissed off or he, something happened where he got kicked out of the establishment. So this kid came back with a can of, this was in Beijing and it happened blocks from where I lived. So it was the talk of the neighborhood. Uh, this kid came back with a can of gasoline and set the place on fire and killed everybody inside. For, so the very next day, every PC cafe in Beijing was shut down. It was illegal. Can't have a PC cafe. Wow. Done. All these people, uh, many people in that, in, in, at that time didn't have access to a computer other than a PC cafe, and they just fucking well, cut they, them off. Sounds right like then. the government found an excuse to shut down, you know, open. Yeah. But what's crazy is open access to the world. It gets shut down, and then like five, six months later, all of a sudden they all. They start slowly opening up. Oh, they yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again, just just an example of the government being very uh, heavy handed. Uh, I remember being at the gym, and it was the day of the Tiananmen Square massacre, which, according to the Chinese government, never happened. But I was watching BBC. This was a this was a gym in a very nice ho hotel that hosts many foreign people. So they have BBC. Uh, British Broadcasting Channel, and I was jogging on the treadmill with the TV. All of a sudden, it went blank. Yes, it just, boom, just, I, I was watching, and what the fuck happened? And I, I was like tapping the TV, switching the channels. All the other channels worked. So every network has a five-second delay, so where they can, you know, yeah, yeah. and then, but they, except they have their own. Yeah, yeah. They have their so own I, I just left it on that channel, just waiting to see what happens, and after like four or five minutes, when the segment was done, boop, Channel came back on. That's power. That's uh, the important people in the country actually have this application installed, and the kind of information they give up is sent over to. That's the stuff people are really careful of. That's where the whole national security spooky stuff comes out of. Now, obviously, I have a bit of a mixed oh. feeling toward this law. <laughs> he, he's not the only one. We're not the only ones that go out of focus. Are we in focus right now? Yes. Okay. Good. <laughs> Yes, I think this will be the first podcast for weeks where but you're now I'm focused. concentrating. Yeah, now you got me now, concentrating. Is totally okay in the fact that banning an application like this, I have no sympathy. China is a country that bans basically everything imaginable. All right, you can't fucking use Google there. You can't use YouTube. You can't even use Facebook. Dog, you can't even do the most basic things. You try loading up a match of siege, type in Tiananmen Square, already banned before the <laughs> word is even sent. It's wild. The Great Firewall is insane. So for every application that the Chinese government bans, uh, I really don't care if on our side of the world we start banning their tools as well. I get it. I understand. It's it. It's, this is why any retaliation from them actually has no bearing. You've already banned everything. You know, even no matter what rumor comes out by them saying this ban will be really bad, there really is no actual equivalent like response. Yeah, just just ban it and force someone to create TikTok here. End of story. Yeah, yeah. Like they don't care about licensing. They steal all our shit. Oh, so yeah. let's oh, yeah. just steal that idea yeah, yeah, and the then stealing of inte yeah. intellectual property is uh, really it's it's their stock and trade. Yeah, they can give. All they can really do is start banning actual American companies that operate there, maybe like Apple or something, which, I don't know, maybe things can escalate, but that's the kind of world we look at. Now again, ladies and gentlemen, Ooh. I want to go back to this bill. Is Apple sweating? Of course. A lot of their uh, production Ooh. facilities are in mainland China. Ooh. Yeah. This is no good for this Apple. Is, uh, no good. This isn't. Because I think it's important to cover this. Now, obviously, this bill's most important section is it's called the Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Applications Act, right? 
Now, of course, if you look into it, just a quick summarization, what this actually There's something do about that legal format, that paperwork, for any that just, I've seen too many of those, I had to read, <laughs> like, like, oh, I recognize right away a legal document, yeah. and I'm like, oh, God damn it. What I find so fascinating about guys like Mudahar or anybody who does any type of journalism who's willing to put themselves through the pain of reading legal documents Get, voluntarily, I guess, I guess it's voluntary because they're getting paid for it, quote unquote. But still, it's I hate reading legal documents. Okay. Yeah. Entity to distribute. I've been fucked by not for not reading it. The mm. distribution, maintenance, or lawyers count on it of any of these applications. So if you're Google or you're Apple and you're running the App Store or the Play Store, or if you're any American like company running an App Store, you cannot distribute TikTok or the facilitate the maintenance and update of it. Basically meaning that unless you have the application already downloaded to your smartphone, you will not be able to re-download it again if wow. this law actually ends up passing and going through. Now, again, it also- Whoa. Means oh, so this is a partial ban. It's not all across. It's like, if you well, have it already, you can keep it? I guess. Damn. That means it makes it more valuable. <laughs> Hold on a second. Wait, so yeah. Is there going to be wait, a market wait. for phones with TikTok pre-installed? Right? Oh, shit. Start buying, find all the iPhones wait. you have in your desk, your old iPhones, and start downloading TikTok. Do I have an account? That's not, I have a TikTok account. You do. I'm I do. A, I'm, a, I'm amazed you know how to use it. I just know how to click the button. <laughs> Yeah, dude, this is gonna I be have TikTok. This is going to be very interesting because TikTok is, I mean, it, obviously it's a huge, huge app. A lot of people just, they, they spend, they use that as their promotional. It, well, that's exactly what I was getting at. For our industry, it's going to change the landscape. A lot of restaurants use TikTok. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should I be? Yeah, you should. My, I, my restaurant is uh, bigger on Instagram. I, we just haven't been able to figure out TikTok, unfortunately. Uh, I've never had much luck with TikTok, but it is huge. There's I no feel denying like it's you, huge. Like ch the Chinese want us, their algorithm for us is for us to be buffoons, for it, the algorithm to work on mm. TikTok, which yeah, is the opposite for them over there. They need to be like geniuses, af athletes, and everything, and, right, right, and all that right. stuff for, for their algorithm to push them through. Yeah, yeah. It is, I mean, that format is addictive and it clearly works because Instagram has their own version of it. YouTube has their own version of it, but it will completely change the landscape if TikTok is banned for ev almost every industry. Good. <laughs> yeah, true. There's Good. opportunity. Is that providing internet hosting services to enable the distribution, maintenance, or updating? So if you're somebody why that's can't, a cloud why provider, can't uh, that Elon Musk pivot and and just make that a version of uh tiktok well why would he want to what's the incentive for him i don't know i mean i don't think he wanted twitter to begin with no he doesn't want he just yeah. he had to he had to at that point you know? Amazon, for instance, right? Selling the server space for them to use, or Oracle, or anyone, then you are automatically barred from actually providing your services to a foreign adversary controlled application. That's also how this works. And again, when they talk about covered companies in this, what is really being discussed is any entity that operates, and this is incredibly vague, they operate directly or indirectly through any parent company, subsidiary or affiliate. So even if TikTok has a US company, if your company is owned by a Chinese company like ByteDance, you're also covered under this. And if you're running something like a website, which is very broad, a desktop application, very broad, a mobile application, or augmented or immersive technology applications, meaning you're using something like the Oculus or the Apple Vision, you are basically disbarred from being used. All Listen, right, right, off, right off the bat, I'm not educated. Mm -hmm. I don't know all the consequences, right. but I feel like, I, like my own's like, yeah, fuck them, let's, yeah. You know, let's ban them. But we don't even know the consequences. Right. I don't even know what, how it's going to affect me. Right. And then, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll be like chanting, yeah, 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 I'll do this. And then after like, oh, fuck, I just got fucked. Right. I don't even know. Well, like, that's because it, the tentacles touch so many things. Right. Yeah. They provided exact specifications. So basically applications that permit you to create an account or profile to generate, share, and view text, images, videos, real-time communication, <laughs> basically social media. And of course, if your application has more than 1 million monthly active users with respect to at least two to three months preceding the date on which the relevant determination 
of the president is made pursuant, yes, effectively if your application is sizable enough, which TikTok is well beyond 1 million. You're looking at about 100 and I think 50 million Americans using TikTok on basically a monthly basis. It's actually insane. That's almost half the country that this application has direct access to. So when they talk about foreign adversary controlled applications, what they refer to is obviously ByteDance Limited, TikTok, and a subsidiary or a successor of any entity. But also B is a covered company that is controlled by a foreign adversary and that is determined by the president to present a significant threat to the national security of the United States. Now, in the last video, when I talked about this, I mentioned TeamU, and it wasn't a joke that I mentioned Oof, TeamU, TeamU, for instance. TeamU and like Sheen are other popular applications from China, which have broken the US market. They've been into the market. They have basically become like serious competitors to Amazon, for instance, right? In the whole e-commerce space. A lot I'm not familiar. You're not familiar with TeamU? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Man, they did a big push. I mean, I think it was not Alibaba. Was there another, or maybe it was Alibaba where you can order all those cheap Chinese products. And right. TeamU is kind of a new thing. Again, as did they did they jump on the bandwagon when the owner of Alibaba was disappeared for a little bit? I guess, I guess. <laughs> like, uh, lady, we uh, give you opportunity. So, so Teamu approached me to do an ad in one of their in in a Pro Chef Reacts video, and I refused because well, because I have a certain political stance, and uh, I didn't want to promote that company, mm -hmm. and. Uh, they just kept coming back and upping the offer and upping the offer. Nothing, no, no, not a crazy amount of money. You know, every single time they upped the offer, it was by like a hundred or two hundred dollars, and I was just like, no, nah, I'm sorry. Num number one, I, I am a bit, I am much You're polite, all right. Of course, I was polite. I'll get them angry with yeah. you. <laughs> uh, you know, I have become more pickier about the products I promote on the channel, anyway, because I, I, I just wanted. I don't want to promote something if I don't care about it or don't use it. So I got a lot pickier and I know for a fact all that stuff on TeamU is absolute garbage. It's just trash. It's, it's, it's terrible trash stuff that gets drop shipped okay. from China. A lot of people have downloaded the TeamU app. You've probably seen advertisements from your favorite YouTubers pushing TeamU, making TeamU haul videos. And that has caused millions upon millions of Americans to download this application and have it on their phone. And they're putting their money into it, they're buying all their doodads and whatever. Now, the reason why these kind of laws freak me out is being a country, being North America, where a lot of our nations rely on things like free expression and free speech, and if you're an American, that First Amendment is very important. You have the ability to practice your speech without the government really imposing on it. There are very, very, very minimal like exceptions where the government can actually jump in where lives can be, I guess, threatened and whatnot. But for the most part, you have free speech and your free expression. Banning applications that allow you to participate in your free expression, social media, is kind of a touchy legal subject. And I kind of wonder how this will be challenged in the court of law going forward. I have to agree with that too, though. As much as, you know, uh, I am not a fan of these, you know, Chinese backed applications, there's a lot of truth to what Mudahar just said. What happens next after that if you ban this one thing? It is a touchy subject. I told you, like, we don't know the consequences. We don't know the consequences. You know, are they going to say, oh, yeah, fuck you, Apple. Mm. You know? Mm. Mm. And, you know, they, they're already prepared to replace, like, get their own version of Apple going. Yeah, yeah. Well, they have they, all the technology. They, or they already do. You know, yeah. they already do. I also believe that for the internet being as free and open and, uh, you know, uh, censor free as possible, we live in an ideal location. If you live in the United States, your internet access is about as uncensored as it's going to get. There are parts of the world, like China, for instance, where the Great Firewall prevents you from accessing key information that can actually be critical of the party regime in that nation. There are other countries where, you know, things like adult content is banned. Even if you are somebody over the age of 18 and you want to access things for your own personal viewing pleasure, there are websites and forums that may be critical of certain regimes around the world that are banned underneath those governments because they don't want people getting access to the 
truth about some of their atrocities and whatnot. You get what I'm saying? There is censorship around the world. When you live in a country like ours, the US, even in Canada, even in Mexico, the internet is about as free and open as one can expect. Laws like this, where applications are now starting to be banned, threatens that level. I mean, in a way, it's kind of like censorship in a way too. You know, if you look at applications like TeamU, tomorrow that could be considered an actual national security threat because it probably siphons the same level of information that TikTok does. And that same level of information could potentially be grabbed by the Chinese Communist Party. And that alone is another bit of fear that the government can have. See, what this kind of a law does is it doesn't actually go against TikTok specifically. It allows the government to have basically a Trojan horse to target any application mm. they feel exists that threatens the national security. <sighs> that encapsulates it perfectly. The Trojan horse. Right. And, and, and it is. And we know it, it yeah. is. We know it is. It is. Yeah. We know it is. And we're just like, ah, whatever. We'll, we accept. Right, right. That, that's a problem. We need to be all on one team and decide. Which is, especially nowadays, seems more impossible than ever. Bleh. I'm telling you, we would be better off without it. Uh, I agree with that. I mean, I think uh, our lives would be much better without social media. But then again, yeah. my shop wouldn't be where it is without it. Like, how I know, but um, you, there's, a, there's always another solution. Right. Because every, if everybody's on the same level playing field, right. there's always going to be that solution. But we also shouldn't be thinking like that because Pandora's box has already been open. Mm -hmm. There's no putting it back. It's it's out there. Now now it's become a part of people's lives. But, let, but but let's have the key to Pandora's box. Let's not have someone else have it. Yeah. Does yeah. that make sense to you? Yeah. I why are we not up to par to to create our own system of social media that why why are we so dependent on TikTok? No, well and team you know that's it's not even that. It's it's already popular. It's or is it that everything we have is dependent on Chinese technology and Chinese influence? Right. The thing is, it's become so ingrained already. How do you go back? How do you go back? There are so many people out there who, not just the content creators who have become reliant on TikTok as part of their income, but you have the consumer, the consumer from uh, the consumers as well, who just. You know, oh, oh, so you're going to take away my TikTok now? So you're feeling, yeah, well, you know what? That's what prohibition was. Mm. They took out a lot of businesses. Right. You know right. what? But we did it because, you know, we thought it was like, it was a terrible fucking mistake. Mm -hmm. Is this the case again? Maybe. Who right. knows? What right. is it? Right. I don't think it's the same thing, but I think, I think we should all get on the same page. Yeah. But as a country, we should be asking other countries to do the same. Just it's fucking impossible. And as soon as you start, like, don't tell us what to do. We'll do what we want to do. Right. Now, I mentioned tinfoil hats in the beginning of this video. And I really do think if you put the tinfoil hat on, I think this law is created more for the U.S. government fearful of any other nation spying on its citizens. That's not them. See, what TikTok is alleged to be doing is no different than what Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. Microsoft, right. a yeah. lot of big tech yeah. companies Can't in the United disagree States with that. are also alleged to be doing, which is spying on their people. You see, if you download any application to your smartphone, there's a pretty healthy chance that a lot of information that it doesn't need is unnecessarily grabbed and sent off to a big server. See, data is the most valuable resource in today's day and age. Not one data point, but millions of data points around the world. When you can amass millions of these points, you can actually figure out how to manipulate people around you. It's like the world of Metal Gear Solid 2, right? Like Metal Gear Solid 4. Once the Patriots AI has access to millions of data points and the feel of how what is society this? What? reacts, it's a video game. you can oh. manipulate things like elections. You can manipulate the health, the mental faculties of society around you. If it sounds like an insane thing that I'm saying, no, really think about it, right? Like imagine if you wanted to push a certain conspiracy theory, if you wanted to push a certain dialogue in the world, having direct algorithmic access to what people see on their feeds is the most important thing. Again, really- oh, That's so wasn't scary that, too. Wasn't that um, what made that show successful, Mr. Robot? Remember that oh, show? Oh, I never watched that show. And then, yeah, they never continued. Well, he became too big. Oh. 
Rami Malek, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was I never, great. I never watched that show, but that is a very good point, right? If they have all this data on you, they will know how to manipulate you. Oh, and... he liked this porn. What? Oh, oh he yeah. like. <laughs> oh, yeah. he like uh, disco fries. Right, right. And then they will know what to put in front of you to sway you to to uh, maybe oh. do something you otherwise may not have. But what's the difference from an advertisement on a billboard before the internet, right? There was only so many billboards. There was only so many places where you could get your information from. Like there's always been a form of gatekeeping and social media is, is that as well. Uh, let's take, for example, guitars. And uh, because I, I play, I've been playing guitar for a long time, forever, the only place where you can hear news about what's the next guitar that's coming, it doesn't even have to be a guitar magazine, could be any magazine covering any specific genre. But back in the day before the internet, that is where you got your information about the latest and greatest. It was more focused, less it was, distraction. It was, it was. You know? But, the, but you didn't get all access. The Exactly. The internet you know? gives you carte blanche, so it's, there's... A, almost a problem of option paralysis sometimes. Say that again. Option paralysis. No, no. Carte blanche. Carte blanche. Carte, carte blanche. Oh, carte blanche. Is that? So you want it, You were somebody was like upset with me that I didn't correct whatever video we were watching. That oh, where was using I, that word. Where I use a French term and yeah. then uh, sometimes uh, I don't even realize it. But. I always think of the newscasters like they speak and then all of a sudden they hello. You know, like the weather in, in Los Angeles and the weather in Los Angeles. Yeah, well, yeah. I, okay, I fucking hate it when people do that. I hate it when people say a foreign word uh, trying to use the, 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 uh, the actual language when they can't speak it for shit. Think about that aspect. And this is one of the things I think the US government fears the most. Because if this is a situation about national security and caring about your privacy laws, they would actually pass a data privacy law instead of just outright mm -hmm. banning TikTok. There's a lot of ways to do this. And this seems like a way designed literally kick the only outlier out of the big tech spying party that exists. So again, I know that I'm saying a lot of things, but to understand there are laws around the world like the GDPR, which is the general data protection regulation in the European Union. It's a massive piece of legislation that covers a lot of data that governments in that region, if they operate, have to basically abide by it, or they suffer serious penalties. And they cover serious things like the right of access, encryption, email marketing, personal data. It's an important piece of law that needs to exist pretty much around most of the world out there. Now, the US has data protection laws. Obviously, if you are under the age of 13, you can benefit from something known as the Child Online Privacy Protection Act, or COPA. If you're in the medical industry, then chances are there are federal laws like HIPAA designed to protect incredibly sensitive information out there. But if you're somebody just browsing on your smartphone, there is no law for you. In fact, if anything, it's open season. Now, ladies and gentlemen, some of the most important data bro- Okay. The world needs more Mudahars in it <laughs> who are like well-researched, well-spoken and have all the facts versus two chefs. Uh, two boobs. And two boobs who, you know, kind of look, read the headlines. And we're lopsided boobs too. We are lopsided boobs. Yeah, there are no two boobs the same size exactly. <laughs> wait, wait. So uh, let me say something. Let me pose a semi-intelligent question. So- the Chinese can be specific in controlling their social media and what they can and cannot do. Why is it we can't reverse engineer that and keep them from, why can't we input technology that prevents them from taking that information? That's a good question. That is probably a question for someone much smarter than me. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely not you. <laughs> that is not a me question. If you know in the contents, uh, yes. if you if you please know, please get back to us. Yeah, please let us know in the comments below. But I have to imagine it's uh, that's something that could be damn near impossible. How do you stop that much flow of information? They they're able to do it, mm. so it's possible. No, I'm no. Just... You see, they're blocking specific things. Yes. So right, like one website, Google, Gmail, YouTube. And yes, they're doing it on a huge scale, but you have millions and millions of different people sending different information 
through different devices. And this is where AI comes in because oh. it's fast as lightning. Oh my God. And it goes, nope, you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do that. It doesn't stop. You're freaking me out now. I'm telling you, mm. we should be fighting fire with fire. Mm. Yes, I don't see why not. I think the last time someone said that World War II happened. No. <laughs> Fight fire with fire? No. No, no. no. World War II World started said when Hitler said, we need more breathing room. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> At least in the U.S. include Experian, CoreLogic, Epsilon, Axiom, LiveRamp. And these are companies where basically their entire job is to scrape personal information floating around on the internet, amalgamate it, and sell it to big companies around the world for serious, serious gains, okay? You might be wondering why this is. That's because, like I said, one person's individual data isn't important. What is my data is not key and important in, a, in one big pool. Mm. However, millions of people, imagine having all, imagine having like, 40 million like people or right? imagine having the entire state of California's data sitting on your hard drive sitting in your entire system and you can use that and parse exactly how to individually target or mass target people in that state that's what's important that's what's worth millions of dollars yes and again, we know, there's we know what time you sleep are... we know what time you eat we know what time you commute we know what time you go out we yeah. know where you go we know we know everything right yep and we, we know where you're likely to go if choice A doesn't mm -hmm. work, so on and so forth. Yeah, that's deep. I mean, this is how a lot of, um, you know, big places decide where they're going to start a business. Mm -hmm. And they, that's, they get this information. Yeah. Around doing it. And from the surface, all they basically claim to say is, it's time to do what winners do, data-driven marketing, made better. They'll use terms like this, right? Marketing feels impossible, but it doesn't have to be. Let us take the complexity of connecting platforms, unifying data, giving you customer intelligence, meaning all of the personal private information that they amalgamate. Yeah, this is what they're selling to these big companies. Companies like Citibank, L'Oreal, Office Depot. There's Starbucks. all different types mm. of corporations. Starbucks is a big client. They use that because... Like uh, the real estate doesn't even, they've, they figured out real estate. They figured out, uh, well, they don't need to do the homework. It's like, oh, is there a Starbucks there? Yeah. That location is perfect mm. to create that real estate because they know that Starbucks did all the homework and everything. Right. If they right. thought it was wise to be there, then right. don't point. They're going after and if you think they're not making good money doing this, you'd be mistaken. These guys are raking in millions upon millions of dollars, basically selling doxes of you to all these big companies. And it's crazy because there exist entire companies out there that fight against these people filling out opt-out requests. I mean, there are entire blogs you can go to to figure out how to opt out of their information. You don't even have to let them sell your progress for you, your actual personal information. If you scroll all the way down to like Axiom's website, you'll probably find this one link right here. Do not sell my personal information. Whoa. Now, just to remind you, like you're gonna do that for every right. industry, is it where you have to? Well, so you spoke about reverse engineering. I mean, I think this is exactly why you can't. You know, how do you find it for every single fucking AI. person? Find every <laughs> everything and click. I don't think it's that easy. Yes, AI, come save us. <laughs> Oh, don't say that. Please, fucking Arnold is about to walk through that door right now. Da -da -da -dum. Go individually to all these actual corporations and file this one form multiple times, waste hours of your day just to make sure your information isn't sold. It's baffling. You click this little piece of information and then they tell you Axiom believes that consumers should have choices regarding business use of information about them. Dog, it's not that you believe people have a choice. You're legally bound to be offering something like this. They probably don't want anybody to fill this shit out, but you actually have to fill out an opt-out request if you're a U.S. individual. And of course, there's different opt-out requests for places like France, Germany, Italy, Spain, and everything. For instance, in Canada, I have to go and fill out this whole fucking form just so I can remind these assholes that I do not want to be spied on. I don't want my information to be sold. And if you're wondering, should I do this? Absolutely. Stick a fucking I mean, knife. Can we can we apply this to other things? Like if I want to rob your house, if you didn't opt out to not get robbed, can I? 
<laughs> like if I want to go steal your car, right. like if you didn't opt out, don't please don't steal my car. Well, what about uh, you know there was a sheet to opt out. Uh, you had to you had to opt out from uh, getting killed, right? So if oh you you want to steal my car, did you opt out of me? Uh, you know breaking your neck? No. <laughs> okay. Legally now I can break your neck. Here I I have a crazy solution. Mm. And hear me oh, out. No. Hang hear on. Me hang out. on. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, we're not even drinking. All right. Okay. Give it to me. By law. Now hear me out. Espionage is a death sentence. You, if you are found to be spying, it's a death penalty. Mm -hmm. I think we make a few examples. Oh, fucking Christ. <laughs> you know what I think. You don't think this is espionage? You, you, uh, 100% is. So why it is, if in an individual did this right. and they were caught, you are subject to the death penalty. But what about espionage for the the, the benefit of uh, protecting freedoms? That's it, counterintelligence. That's that's, a, that's CIA. Okay. So if someone's spying on you, espionage on you, the individual, that person who's spying on you can get killed. Yes. Legally. <laughs> Shit. Maybe not them but you know what i would no 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 no. no. we need to go full tilt no 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 uh this is what i would like i really like what they oh fuck but singapore is uh kind of you know singapore they cane your ass mm -hmm. you know oh, uh, this would be good i think i think we need to do that we need to start caning people for as punishment yeah, but, okay but now here's the problem who are these responsible for tiktok they're they're in china mm. Wait, what, what, same, same thing. You're, you can't go over there and just kill them. Batman did. What? What? Yeah, he went, he went and got, oh, don't you remember that Christ. movie? We, we got to move on. All right. All right. Let's move on. <laughs> anyway, Mudahar, thank you for educating us. You definitely make us feel a little smarter every time we react to some stuff. Make, no, I feel dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel smarter. I feel like a moron. Uh, well. I'm like, oh, wow. You got some funny stuff. Yeah. Uh, disturbing zone. This is one of my favorite Instagram pages. Uh, you know, the end economy is, uh, going through tough times when someone has to put up a sign. Please, please do not say damn, damn. when you hear the price. <laughs> damn. I do say it. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. It happens to me at my shop every is now and then. damn, uh, a swear word? No, I think you can like, uh, I, I guess, yes, technically it is, but if they don't bleep it out, on television, then I don't consider it a swear word. Mm, like you okay. can't say fuck. I've heard some shits on TV though. Right? Yeah. I guess shit has kind of lost its, lost its luster. Has lost its shine. Okay, this I thought was just fucking bizarre. I sent this yeah, to you. you sent this to me. I was watching yeah. well, this. Spe speaking of the Chinese, I mean. Uh, How uh, fucking some, cool is that? Look at, look at that. I mean. But what is this? Uh, I, is, that wiff is this wiffle ball? I have no but idea. With just what feet? The f uh, what, what's that hacky sack? It's like is it hacky sack? It's or is like it, it's like hacky the sack with, the with the badminton. Uh, is it badminton? Oh, yeah. Is it badminton without the? Somebody was working in a badminton factory and like was denied rackets. Dude, look at the precision. I look at the, the fucking precision. Look at that shit. These guys are fit as fuck too. Like they kind of look like they're Irish tap dancing too. <laughs> <laughs> Take away the thing. Yeah. And put music to this. Yeah, for real. Well, somebody, somebody do that, please. Yeah, let's start with that. Okay. The Japanese and how... Um, the, the stuff they do with everything. They take something they that's take amazing. They take something amazing. And make it celestial. Yes, they make it amazing. Uh, even more amazing. Uh, that, that was terrible, but you get did what you, I mean. Did you like that word? I did, celestial. You have a very good vocabulary. A much better vocabulary than me. Clearly, I... Didn't like what? Pay attention like what do you mean? Like what? Like like? Oh like. yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's watch this. Uh, check out this egg sandwich in Japan. Ooh, a souffle. Yes. Oh, I would have mixed it a little bit better. No, I think they wanted that. I love that mayo. I told you how much I love that mayo oh. now. Oh, I'm so addicted to it. But, it, but was the but was it seasoned or the egg white seasoned? Probably. Dude, look at that. Oh, more egg yolk. Oh, some nori powder. Oh, okay, that's... that's Japanese, but I, you know what? Mm. 
I can Frenchify that. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. So the egg whites, I would make, I would definitely combine the egg. I would make a cheese souffle, basically. Mm. But now it's no longer an egg sandwich. Yeah, true. You know what? I would Americanize that. American slice. Yes. <laughs> yes, baby. <laughs> that, that's, that's what a, I was looking that's for. A, that's all I would do. That's what I was right, looking well, for. You know, I, I believe the Japanese take everything and make it a little better, including television shows. Oh, yeah? And uh, yeah, well. Dude, they have some kinky stuff in Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They love their kink. They love their- And it's on primetime yeah, TV. Yeah, yeah, they like their tentacles. You know what I mean? They. Yes. It, isn't that octopus porn? Yeah, yeah, tentacle porn. But why? Yeah, it's a big thing. Well, from what I understand, Are they it started. Well, it started because you couldn't show penal penetration, so mm -hmm. they kind of got around it by using tentacles. That's that. That's you know, apparently, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like this and then even thus more. A genre of porn was developed called tentacle porn. Well, the Japanese do everything better, including their television shows, and I must have watched this like. 10 times in a row, just dying laughing. Okay. Check this out. Okay. Oh, they're making her believe that she... Dude. <laughs> Oh, I hate to say it, but I hate to say this. Oh, uh, can I say this? Well, you have to tell us now. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> they were like, oh, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can I? No, we might. We might have to edit. No, that let's leave that. <laughs> no, let's make a clip out of it, too. <laughs> Dude, she was freaked she out. Was she was freaked afraid. The Japanese do some crazy shit on TV. But don't like, they do that stuff like 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 it, like trap like like animals like or that, like? Yeah. Well, there was uh, there was one uh, thing I saw where they had the you know they have a public bathroom, and then when you go in and you sit down, the fucking thing raises out of and the roof opens and you they show you sitting on the Make fucking it on the yeah, and like they even have a clip of someone dropping a deuce. As it rolls up, yeah. <laughs> or uh, they'll have, uh, they'll serve you dinner. Okay, you need to send me those. Yes. Yeah. And then they'll serve, uh, they'll uh, do a show where they have a, a few people sitting at a dining table, but the whole room is slanted on an incline. So when they're trying to serve you, they're like sliding down. Yeah, yeah. They, they do some crazy shit in Japan. I, I need to be yeah. educated right, on right. this. Let's see. I love this. We now. we love our guy uh, L. Uh, uh, did I find him or did you find you, him? You sent me. Well, I introduced you knew him. Yeah. Well, let me say his name fucking properly. L. Estepario Siberiano. I don't know if I pronounced that right. I'm sorry if I didn't. Well, where is the separation? Uh, well, we have to go to. Is his, it uh, El? Est uh, here we go. Oh, uh, L. Okay, there, there you go. Yeah, yeah. L. Estepario. Siberiano. Go to the links in the description below to uh, to view the original clip. Dude. <laughs> Dude. This guy's like an octopus. Dude, that guy's magic. Yes. You know, if you practice anything, well, you can be like this kid. Is he even old enough to have 10,000 hours though? There's a little bit of a prodigy there though. Yeah, no, well, I mean, when talent meets hard work. <laughs> yeah, you sent me this too. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. <laughs> and he does it again. <laughs> okay, ow! Ow! <laughs> but look at how, 
But look at how upset this guy gets. Oh my god. It's like... Okay, we don't need to watch this. No, no, I get to... Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. Oh my god, look at him. Look at him. Look at how upset he is. Wait, wait. Look. But then he does it again. Look at how upset he is. Ow. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> and he keeps he keeps it. <laughs> oh, oh man! Oh. All right, uh, we saw that one egg video, and then I guess uh, Instagram caught on that I was looking at lots of egg videos. So they sent me this as I was waiting for you. You were okay. downstairs oh, doing yeah? something. Yeah. I thought this was pretty uh, pretty sick. Am I just learning about deviled egg burgers? Like oh. this is genius. No, it's not. <laughs> I, saw this I don't know. I would eat the shit out of it. Like yeah, I but eggs, I, I, this is a must try. Now I make my filling different every time. This is something you make at home. Yeah, you know, having fun. Listen, right, it's here. I just did salt, pepper, paprika, and mayo. Poop it into your egg, then a small cheesy. Can patty, you say poop it into <laughs> the other half of your egg? Finish with sesame seeds and don't share with anyone. Easy, ten out of ten recipe. All right. I for a split second I thought it was a bow bun, and I was like, oh, that's a good burger. <laughs> I have made burgers out of bao buns. Yeah, before. that's actually so. Yeah, yeah, they are delicious. Delicious. They are delicious. Can you sear a bao bun because it's they're usually steamed and puffy, right? Oh yeah. Uh, you know what's one of the greatest things you can do with a bao bun? Tell me. Tell me. Fry it. No. Yeah. What does it look like? It comes out beige. Bubbly. No, it doesn't bubble at all. It just toasts. Uniform. Uniform. And it is going to be one of the best bao buns you've ever had in your life. Why, are, why isn't this more common then? Uh, you know, that's a good question. That is a good question. But I've uh, I've seen it done at other restaurants before. It's definitely not as popular, but I do prefer deep fried bao buns. It is. Okay, now I, now I need to see that. We got our grilled cheese video that we are going to film. I think by the time this episode comes out, we would have just filmed it. And then it'll come out a few weeks after that. We're going to do a roast chicken arc mm -hmm. after that. And we haven't picked what the next theme of videos we react to Dude, will be I, after. I, I don't know if it's um, serendipity, but like the Cuban sandwich keeps popping up around me. Mm, mm. I told you I wanted to do a duck. Da Toscano. Michael Toscano is, has like a, a porchetta Cuban sandwich place. That's like, he has one open. Oh, it's dude, open yeah. now? Dude. Can we go today? <laughs> I know you're so on I'm your fast. So I'm breaking my fast? It's up to you. I, I won't force you. But it's me, buddy. Have you seen Dune yet? No. So we got to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's long. Yeah, it's like. Oh, but actually, I'm like fasting. I, I don't have to go pee or anything. Uh, all right. Let's uh, get ready to close this out. Uh, Wait. Do you have um viewer questions? Viewer questions? I'm getting there. Okay. Calm the fuck down. Wait, what's what's this one? Live this is, chef. Yeah, Who's yeah. that? We have a live Q and A coming up. We do. Yeah. When? I didn't tell you the date yet. Oh. <laughs> Draymore asks, "Hi there, chefs. What's the weirdest food combination you have ever tried that surprisingly worked?" Pringles and caviar. Oh. That sounds interesting. Now we talk in the real caviar, right? Oh, yeah. Like oh, sturgeon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? Sa uh, sour cream and chives mm. Pringles with caviar. Hell yeah, dude! That can totally work. And totally. You know what works surprisingly well is uh, onions, peanut butter, and uh, potato chips. But sweet onions. No, no, like straight up. Yeah, that alkalinic onion. My buddy Matt Halpern from the so band. So sweet uh, onions, peanut butter? No, not sweet onions. I'm talking regular white onions, peanut butter, and Dorito chips. My buddy Matt Halpern of the band Periphery. Uh, made this. Made, well, not he didn't make it, but he recommended it to me, and it actually worked really well. And then I thought about it more. Well, Southeast Asian peanut sauces often is mixed into some kind of salad. It Works yeah, it really works. well. It does. Well, peanut butter, yes. Yeah. Just don't get the raw onion with. Well, no. Oftentimes, these salads and stuff will come with raw onion. Mm. Trust me. Give it a try. It it actually works very well. Any memorable appetizers with tiny wieners, cocktail sausages? Oh, he's in a blanket for the win every fucking time. Yeah. And it's the obvious one. Yeah. But what's what's the famous baseball related one? Baseball related. There's one. a brand that you see at the. 
You can get them now. You can get them frozen at the. I don't know. I'm just so thinking Vienna good. sausages. And I, and I could tell you those frozen ones in yeah. the fucking air fryer are the bomb. Are they? Oh God, they. God, if you let us, if just, you know, let us know in the comments below what brand. In the oven, about. they bake, you know, and they fluff mm -hmm. up. But in the air fryer, ooh, like gets a little crispy. Oh, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. I like anything in tube form in my mouth. So. And a big dollop of mustard. And <laughs> Okay, hell yeah. I might be eating tonight. Uh, <laughs> what is the best day to go to a restaurant? I assume they get Monday fresh through food. Thursday. I was just about to say that, but let me finish this guy's fucking question. Oh, okay. <laughs> I assume they get fresh food for the weekend. Maybe on Thursday is Tuesday, Wednesday. Older yeah, that's ingredients. if you're that's if you're somewhere. If that's if you're in the boonies, yeah, that's true for. But in New York City, you know, you get fresh food every day. Yeah, you get fresh food. But I do agree, yeah. Tuesday to Thursdays are the best days yeah. to go because they'll usually, the, the weekend rush is over. They get their fresh food on Monday if they're open. They've finished prepping the fresh food for Tuesday. And Tuesday's a good day to go. And usually it's pretty, pretty much always the slowest day of the week, that Monday or Tuesday. So I feel like it's a good time to go. But then again, you may get the B team at restaurants because a lot of the cooks mm -hmm. are off. So yeah, maybe Wednesday, Thursday is better. But now, you know, all these privileged chefs don't want to work Saturday, Sunday. Mm. Friday, Saturday, they want their weekends now. Mm. And they're only, you know, they're Monday through Thursday advising. And, right. you right. know. Right. I take Sundays off. <laughs> all right. Moving on before Frenchie gets exposed. I think most people with a business and a YouTube channel will plug their business. Have you tried plugging your channel and podcast along with the sandwiches or Fosby? I was kind of doing that at Mission at one point. I would give out I these mean, free- uh, For the French onion soup burger? Yeah, like so do you plug the podcast or the YouTube channel at Le Ravage? My yeah. answer is going to- But how? To you're more social media savvy, but savvy. I don't mix the two brands together in that direction. Meaning I will mention about Mission Sandwich Social on my social media platforms because mm -hmm. Chef Brian as the public figure, that's one of the things I do, but I don't want to do it the other way around because I want the brand to be able to stand alone by itself. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, yes. I, I don't want to intertwine too much of Do you feel Le Revage needs to do that too? Well, you mean like promote the podcast and stuff? On, no, should uh, it stay yeah, its yeah, own absolutely, brand? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's its own brand. Um, you know, I, I actually am not really for attaching a person too much to a brand. Number one, it can get dicey that mm -hmm. way. And now I'm the owner, so it, and it you doesn't don't matter. And you don't want the, the, the brand to be dependent on a person. Right. And I'll be very honest with you. Another reason why I don't put myself- It's weird. I asked this question to Blondie. Yeah. I was like, well, how does, um, what's her name? What's that famous old white chick that went to jail for- um, She's into food and like she has Martha a, Stewart. Martha Stewart. Yeah. Like once she's gone, is like does Martha Stewart the brand continue? You probably. Oh yeah, hundred percent sure, hundred uh, hundred percent. But she is Martha Stewart, the person who has a line. But of she's so good at being responsible for her company, right? You know, so yeah, is it the same standards are going to be there after like? I don't want anything I do to affect the brand. Does Martha mission. Stewart, the brand, stand alone without Martha Stewart? It will one day. Yeah, yeah for sure. I, th I think so. Okay. Yeah. But I know for myself, having an up and coming brand, I want the brand to be able to stand on its own. And you, also, you don't need people to know who you are. I don't need, yeah, I don't need that additional exposure. Yes, I'm putting myself yeah. out there. But that was my logic with the, the restaurant. Yeah. Like, Every all these chefs wanted to be you want want to be superstars and everything right. like that, and then they're loyal to their brand, right? right. Not the restaurant. Right. I always said, well, but I have the luxury right. of being the owner as well. I said, the restaurant needs to be standalone. It right. can't be dependent on me. Yeah, and uh, I have another reason as well. It has a little bit to do with my race, and it's uh, you know having a sandwich. Do restaurant. tell. I have a sandwich restaurant, and I don't want people to have this preconception that it's an Asian sandwich restaurant. Because it's happened. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen, uh, they, I can't tell you how many times I've 
been somewhere, met some people, and then I say I own a sandwich shop, and then they go, is it Asian? And I'm like, well, there's some Asian stuff on it, sure, but you know, it's no, not, it's not. It's not an Asian sandwich shop. And I would tell them nicely. I know they don't mean anything by it, but I don't want people to have a preconception of what it is before they get to try it. So if I, you know, if they just see Mission Sandwich Social, okay, it's a sandwich shop. I never thought of it as being Asian. Yeah, but you know, you you know me on a different level. You know that I can do food other than just Asian. You also know that that's part of what I do as well, but it's not an, I'm not marketing it as an Asian sandwich shop. No, no. and you wouldn't want to. No, unless okay. that's what you're going for, but that's not what I was going for. I happen to have some Asian sandwiches, uh, inspired sandwiches on the menu, but that's not what Mission's about. But that would be like me opening up a sandwich plot place and just, that doesn't make it French sandwich. Well, if if you open up a sandwich spot and you- And I would definitely have French ingredients. Yeah, you would. Because or French theme stuff. Yeah, you would have some French theme stuff for sure, but it's, but it's not necessary. Unless you named it some generic- Le French, Sandwich? Yeah, Le Sandwich. Yeah, sure. You know, people are going to assume that it's- has Le Sandwich? To, yeah, it's, people will assume that it has something to do with, uh, with French cuisine, but no, that's, that's not what I'm trying to push with my brand. I'm trying to do something broader, bigger than that. Anyway. So that's my answer. Maybe I'm going to open up La Mission Sandwich next door. <laughs> I got, uh, got a good question. Are there any lost family recipes that you regret not learning? My oh. late grandma used to make dishes consisting of minced meat squares encapsulated by layers of egg. My mom didn't learn the recipe, though I think I might have stumbled, uh, I may, might have stumbled the method by dipping in egg and frying several times repeatedly. Yeah, a lot of, I'm, that's, my whole point of cooking is I'm chasing Your my grandmother's, grandmother's recipe. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, unfortunately, a lot of lost recipes. Yes, same thing. I have a lot of memories. I'm like, damn, yeah. damn, damn, same damn. Same thing. And nobody, that generation between me and her didn't. Right. Meanwhile, I could, oh God. Yeah, my grandmother so passed away years. last year. I, I, didn't, I didn't make more time to hang out with her more, you know? Yeah, so unfortunately, there's a whole ton of recipes. I can't tell you exactly which ones, but unfortunately, my mom's a good cook. But, so, but. I did find her recipe. Ooh, very nice. But it's, you know, it was written like what? Close to 80 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I got, it's very fragile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta be careful with that. You gotta Damn, cherish I forgot, that. I forgot that I found a oh, job because the one, I'm chasing always is a stuffed, stuffed veal breast recipe. Ooh, so, that sounds delicious. And she had a and she had a, a blanquette de veau. Uh -huh. I mean, I can make my own right. good version of it, but just not hers, right? You know. And then her tripe recipe was just the bomb. I I can get close, mm -hmm. just not the same. There, yeah, close, but not but no cigar. Yeah. There was, uh, my grandma would, well, you know, I really wish I learned more of her kimchi. She made so many different times. You don't win me over with the kimchi, you know that. I'm sorry? You never win me over with the kimchi. You don't like kimchi? kimchi? I don't know. I, there's, I must have had bad kimchi. Mm. You have to give me good kimchi. Yes, yes, yes. Or you just have bad taste. Has anyone ever had any positive or negative experiences with a celebrity chef? I was blocked by Jet Tila. <laughs> We actually covered this. Oh, we I'm... touched upon it. Uh, Jet Tila, what the fuck did you do to Jet get, get blocked he's, by he's... Jet Tila? He looks so happy and jolly. Yeah, there we go. That question right there, Jordan. And I kind of know him. Yeah. Like uh, I had a former girlfriend that used to has a lot of deals with him. Mm -hmm. Like she promotes him and does a lot of, gets him like gigs. I mean, we've touched upon it. Some people guessed correctly, but we're not going to name names. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't do that. She's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like they're, they, we have to answer these questions in some, like, who do we, have I, we have, I haven't been. Bobby blocked. Flay sucks. No. <laughs> we wanted to say that before. No. Yeah, we did. We did. And he's a true gentleman. Yeah. I, I, can't, I, I can't say anything bad about him ever again. He really was a gentleman. Um, all right. Last question for today. This is actually a pretty fun one. Question. Do you eat popcorn plain or add seasonings or other items to popcorn? Also, do you eat popcorn with bare hands or with chopsticks? Who the fuck eats popcorn 
with chopsticks. You can't get enough popcorn with chopsticks. No, you can't. Even if What's you're the, really the whole, good, the whole, if you're really, even if you're really good with chopsticks. Yeah. Uh, my fave is popcorn oil, then adding the ranch powder mix and eating with chopsticks. Wait, ranch powder mix? Ranch powder mix. That sounds that sounds kind of dope as fuck, actually. Dude, also, I didn't even know that that was a thing. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, for sure. And what what kind of oil? Popcorn oil. Is that the bu- fake butter? I guess butter? that's like the fake butter, yeah. With ranch powder. But if, you, if you're making it, why can't you just put real butter? Right? Good point. Yeah, just put real butter. Yeah, right? Uh, you S- know what I- Salt uh, and more salt. Yeah, you know what I did once, which I highly regretted afterwards, was uh, you know the, the, the instant noodle cups, but the spicy one, the Shin Ramen? Okay. It's a Korean brand, so it has this packet of spice in there. It's mm-hmm. a spicy ramen. Ooh, you use that packet. I use that, mixed it into popcorn. I also put some nori powder, seaweed powder- Mix it up. And like the first two bites, dude, was fucking phenomenal. But then. But then the spice kicked in. And holy shit, my friend and I were just dying. And we only had like five, six pieces by the time it really caught on fire. And it didn't. It, it, it didn't let, let off. It, it didn't, didn't let off. But also um, I felt it. The whole. Going through. Yeah, going through me. Yeah, it was brutal. Uh, so don't do that. Oh, I get you now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's all the time we have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode as much as we did making it. Remember, don't be afraid to fail because it can only make you stronger. With that said, I'm Chef Brian Sound, not your typical chef. Frenchie. And we'll see you really soon. Bye.